The human brain is responsible for amazing human achievements, but also our catastrophic failures. The brain is such a mystery, and understanding it will bring great opportunities. Fortunately, it is the focus of intense research, much of it being done right here in Vancouver. Our first guest is Canada's research chair in neurobiology and learning, and a Peter Wall Institute scholar to boot. Please welcome Dr. Lara Boyd. Thank you so much for inviting me here tonight. It's a real pleasure and a real treat to get to share with you a little bit about what I think about every day at work. So how do we learn? And what happens in our brain to allow that learning? And these are the questions that I'm fascinated with, and I am just lucky enough to get to spend my days thinking about at UBC. So as Sam mentioned, I'm Laura Boyd. I'm a neuroscientist at the University of British Columbia. And it is a real privilege to get to think about how our brains change to allow us to learn and to grow. This is my brain. And it's magnificent, not because it's my brain, because of how intricate and elegant and beautiful it is. And we live in a remarkable time because we have tools now that allow us to look inside the human brain and living, behaving people and try to understand how does it work how does it change so that we can learn and grow? How does it change with development? And that's what we get to do. So this is from a magnetic resonance image. It's a technology that allows us to see all the wiring or all the connections in the brain. So all the connections from front to back, side to side, and top to bottom. And from being able to create images like this, we've learned a tremendous amount of things about the brain. So first of all, we've been able to debunk things that aren't true. So no, you don't use 10% of your brain at any given time. Uh, that one's not true. And no, your brain is never actually silent or at rest. One of the best things, in my opinion, that we've learned is that your brain continues to change throughout your lifespan from the time you're born really until the time we die. And it has a remarkable potential for change, and that's what we call neuroplasticity. And so what we've learned is that every time you learn something new, you learn a new skill, a new fact, you have a new experience, you change your brain. And so tonight when you leave this room, your brain will be different than when you entered it. And I think that's really pretty cool. Hence the title of my talk. So this is neuroplasticity. This is this idea that all new skills and facts are accommodated by change in our brains. We're doing it throughout our lifespan. There's one catch about neuroplasticity. It's exciting and thrilling, but the number one driver of neuroplastic change in your brain is your behavior. It's what you're engaged in. So you all are doing something quite brilliant. You're out here learning, you're growing, you're stretching your minds. And that's a very healthy thing to do, and it can positively change your brain. But we can also negatively change our brain by engaging in behaviors that are less stimulating, less healthy, perhaps more sedentary. And in those instances, you're changing your brain as well, just not for the better. So how does this work? How does neuroplastic change take place in our brains? There's kind of three main processes. Um, they all interact, they all work together. So when we're learning, we can rapidly change our brain chemistry. This probably supports short-term memory. We can change the structure of our brain, those wires that I talked about, they can elaborate themselves such that they can conduct quickly or more slowly. And then we can change how our brain regions function together. And together, those processes take place and they enable us to learn and to change. And it's one of the most magnificent and exciting things in neuroscience is to understand the extent of this change. So for example, if you had taken my neuropathology class at UBC as little as six to seven years ago, I would have told you that a white matter structure in the brain called myelin never changes, that the white matter tracks in our brain are fixed. And it turns out I was absolutely wrong. And as a scientist, it's thrilling to be wrong. It really is. Once you get over yourself, there's a moment. But <laughs> it's thrilling because it means something new, something really exciting, something unexpected has been discovered. So we now know that this idea, this myelin, these, this, the insulation around those long wires in our brains, that it changes with behavior. It changes with practice. And something really exciting that we discovered in my lab is that it changes during learning when learning is quite hard, when you're struggling with a new idea, when you're barely hanging on. That's when myelin is optimally changing, optimally elaborating its structure. It doesn't change if something's too hard. It doesn't change if something's too easy. It changes when it's just right. 
So I've been telling you how incredibly plastic the brain is and how magnificent it is, and yet it really lets me down some days because of this list. So why can't we learn anything we want? I'm never going to speak French. I'm resolved. I've tried. It's not going to happen. So why do our kids sometimes fail in school? And then why don't people fully recover after the brain is damaged? So that is what's limiting and facilitating plasticity. And, and this is where I really began my career. I started studying stroke in my lab, started studying, and I spent most of my career studying how damaged brains recover and how we can help them learn and recover. More interestingly and more recently, I've become uh, able to turn my attention to another idea, another problem of neuroplasticity. And that is, in the education system, what are we doing to children's brains? And are their brains ready to do the things that we're asking them to do at the right time? This is a brand new field that we're trying to lead the world in at UBC called educational neuroplasticity. And I would put to you that the public or that kind of our traditional education system is the longest running and worst controlled neuroscience experiment of all time. <laughs> so we take children, we give them all the same intervention, and then we wonder why some find it too easy and some absolutely fail and can't accomplish it. And then others are kind of bored, but they get along. And that's kind of what we've done uh, to date in education. But now what we're able to do, because we can interact with the brain, is we can start to think about how could we inform educational interventions? How could we tailor them to children's needs and to children's development so that they're getting the right level of difficulty? They have optimal struggle during learning. It's not too hard because we're not changing there and it's not too easy but it's optimized based on that individual child. So these are some ideas that we're starting to think about at UBC, and we've been lucky enough to form a research cluster in educational neuroscience and neuroplasticity, and coming together to form a brand new field that can talk about this. So I'm a neuroscientist with lots of education, but I don't know anything about education. And we have educators who don't know very much about the brain, and we have policy scientists who think about how does this get translated into the dollars that we spend in our schools and into budgets at the uh, local and the provincial level. So we're trying to all come together and speak each other's language and think about how do we make education better for everyone. So a couple things about this that are going to be real challenges before we get too excited is one big challenge is that all of us when we change our brains, we change it very uniquely, very differently. So when you leave this room tonight, all of you will have changed your brain, but darn it, for us neuroscientist researchers, you're all gonna have changed it differently. Somewhat differently, very uniquely, based upon your own experience, your own health, and your own background. And so our challenge is to come up with personalized interventions, personalized learning interventions that are gonna allow our children to really thrive, to optimize their change with education, and really become the best, most well-prepared adults they possibly can. And I think that that's an effort that's really worthy, and it's one I look forward to working on for the next half of my career. So thank you very much.